Yeah. All right. So we'll we'll go ahead and get get started here, Greg. Uh, our recording. We got good morning. In, we, good morning. Uh, it's an interesting interesting case we want to discuss yeah. today, and it actually uh, it hits on a number of topics that we get into. Uh, uh, obviously, when we talk about intent a lot in demonstrations of intent, um, we talk about that with understanding and reading human behavior, but we also get into that with the you know the legal side of things as well yeah. and with the supreme court so this one we'll, we'll talk about the case and then why we think it's an interesting one so it's a bit of a bit of a, a legal episode um but this is an important one because it has to do with kind of recent technologies with uh what you can get access to with your with your iphone or any phone that you have and also how data backs up and how that can be used so it's kind of an interesting one for a number of facets but i'll start off and just give <laughs> Give this incident uh, that happened in 2020. A guy by the name of Kevin McCall um, was playing poker with four other men at a private residence. As the poker game progressed, McCall began losing large sums of money. He became increasingly frustrated with his losses. He made threats to do something about it, as he said. Uh, and the group saw McCall. Um, so this is obviously reports after the crime with the investigation. He was frantically using his cell phone to make calls and texts mm -hmm. to unknown persons. And he eventually received a phone call and then stepped outside saying that he needed to take care of something. So uh, this, this is like, I can see this play out and just like, it's so dumb. Yeah, but, but so obviously he stepped outside shortly thereafter. There was a knock at the door. One of the poker players saw McCall standing outside. But when he opened the door for him, two masked men wielding a rifle and a handgun stormed inside. They ordered everyone to the ground, grabbed cell phones, cash on the poker table. And then the masked men shot two of the poker players and escaped with cash and cell phones. They were not killed. Uh, I don't even think they were hurt that seriously, but they were shot. Um, and then McCall was arrested on April 14, 2020, on two counts of attempted felony murder and four counts of armed robbery. So then what happened from that case is that, you know, they arrested him and then uh, they he didn't actually give up. I think the other folks involved. Right. He said, I'm not telling you anything. So they said, OK. Um, and they got a, a warrant to search his phone. And then on his phone, um, what happened was when they were searching his phone, they couldn't find a whole lot. They, I don't think they couldn't figure out exactly who else it was connected to. Um, but because, and there's, there's the issue too, with how the phone was backed up to the iCloud. It had been 12 yep. hours, right? Prior to the robbery was the last time it got backed up. So they were like, okay, well, we're not going to find any direct evidence to that crime on here, but there may be some, some type of other evidence that we can use. And then it, obviously in searching this phone, because the, you know, they got the warrant proved. They found a photo of him with a gun. And so he was a convicted felon. So prior convicted felon can't own or possess a firearm. So they said, okay, well, we got him on this charge as well. You know, we, we know that, that we can, we can get him on this. So anyway, it, fast forward, it goes through, he gets convicted on, I, I can't have all the charges that he gets convicted on here. I'll look up here in a second. Um, and then get, appeals, right. His conviction and specifically the, um, with the warrant saying it was too broad. Uh, basically they shouldn't have had access to all of his data. It needs to have access to specific data, right? You can't have too broad of a search warrant and then just come across something that you find. So basically this was a sort of turned into a fourth amendment case, uh, in a sense about what you can and cannot search for or, or what a, a, the police can and cannot search for um, when investigating a crime, what rights you have, and then it plays into technology and yep. there's because there's a lot of great cases coming out now with this stuff about what you can and can't do and how your data is used. So I thought this was a good one to talk about. That's sort of the background. I don't want to give away too many yeah, other things so before much. jump into so, it. So, so, so I just, I had to tell the story because I mean, just imagine sitting there and this guy's freaking out. Then he's frantically on his phone. Then he steps out and says, I need to take care of something. It reminded me of like the, what was it? The American Psycho where he's like, I have to return some videotapes. Exactly. Like, where, where are you going? Yeah, right? but there's Patrick, so many, where are you there's going? so many capers like this. Uh, yeah. uh, John Holmes with the uh, break and murder of all those folks. And John Holmes actually setting the, the people uh, uh, on the direction of where the apartment was and then saying, hey, I got to step out for a minute and leaving the door unlocked. Uh, I mean, there's so many precedents for this. And this kid uh, truly uh, Hollywood, look at the drama here unfolding, yeah. right? So McCall is uh, is a thinker, okay, but he's not a critical <laughs> thinker. So so let's go non sequitur for a minute. You know how okay. I like to go out of order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, the reason that McCall was charged uh, with the armed robbery and murder, even though he didn't take place in either 
yep. uh, the attempted murder. Let's be very specific. Yep, yeah, that's a good point. Is yeah, the yeah. felony murder rule. Uh, because the felony murder rule, dude, you're approximate cause of this going down. So you're as guilty as the principal pulling the trigger. So yep. that's going on. And, and McCall's got to be lucky that these high strung son of a guns that he, you know, called at the last minute. And remember, he probably had it set up. I'm going to this poker game. If shit goes sideways, trust me, you know, and then made the final plans right during the text and the phone call, Brian. I mean, this wasn't something that just spontaneously happened with his thumb as he's, you know, betting on the hand of cards. This was developing over these hours of playing cards. And, you know, right. think about how, how bad this is degrading. So uh, um, you used a great term. And I want to make sure that everybody, when you read this case, it'll be in the episode details, by the way, uh, 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 this can't be a fishing trip, Brian. So you can't have a speculative search warrant. Search warrants are for specific items detailed in that search warrant. I expect to find this, 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 yes. because that's what I'm looking for. And then to the judge, the return of search warrant is just as important because here's the items I did, in fact, find that I'm going to use for evidence. And then under discovery, that goes to the defense, right? So the important thing about that is the phone is locked and they know yeah. there's evidence on the phone. Yeah. So this young detective who doesn't know how these types of search warrants go because technology goes faster than the law, Brian, what he does is he says, hey, it's likely that if we get this iCloud, uh, iCloud account where he routinely dumps to his phone, the last time being 12 hours before, we'll probably find the code for the phone. And in the phone is going to be the prize. It's going to be these text messages that we want to use against them. There's probably going to be photos that are going to be used. So, so if we use just that, the idea of the court is, wait a minute. So if I arrest John's brother, Tim, Tim might you know, give me information on John. You can't do that. Can't do that. Okay, right. it's got to be a very laser yeah. focused. A goes to B goes to C. Yeah. So it, therefore, I assume. Yeah, it has you know, to you're be very. Asking, assume, you, right. You, you know, have to lay it out. Be there. Yeah, you right. have to lay it out just like that. I just want to hit up but on the, that in perfect. Yeah, it, yeah. It, because it, it's important it to go. To if you want to get to this end state, you have to yep. say, "I took step one, which which will lead me to step two, which yep. will lead me to step three, which will obviously." And then you you're supposed and, to go, "Okay, I got you. Now I see and it can't and it can't be broad, Brian. It can't no." Like, like, for example, in a search warrant, you always name the thing. All vehicles parked on the property, uh, the curtilage of the property, including sheds and outbuildings. These are things that you actually type into every uh, uh, affidavit for a search warrant as the affiant. Now, while you're doing that to the judge, the judge goes, what's with the shed? And you go, well, a computer's portable, and a guy might hide it in the shed. Okay, that makes okay. sense to me. Yeah. Well, what about the vehicles that are parked on the property? Look, people come and go, and there's probably the evidence of the dope sale in the vehicles from previous coming and go, oh, okay, I got that. You know, uh, uh, a handgun is mobile, so they may have put it in the, the car just before our hitting the house. So the judge has the ability, and so does the PA, right? Because your prosecuting attorney is going to look at what you draft and go, no, change uh, subsection 24. That's too broad, right? The idea is that, okay, let's keep this laser focused on what we expect to find and why we're going into that. Now, the, the great thing about the law is I don't have to do that during the time of the arrest, okay? I can go into your pocket. I can go into your car because I'm seizing the car as chattels. It's part of the, the caper. I can uh, go onto your phone very initially. Now, Supreme Court says no yeah, for greater America. But there. Colorado's got a caveat. Colorado says, hey, if it's incident to the lawful arrest, you've got the right to take a look at Be those calls well, that are then, on there. So hang on, hang on, hang on. Because before you go any further yep. with that, explain that real quickly, because that means if it's if it's pertains to the situation that you're in in that arrest, like it has to directly pertain to that. So it's something you observe, something you it's, witness, something. Right? right. I mean, so so like a copper coming up on you and you're making the call, go, go, go for the robbery or for the yeah. dr d drug sale. The drugs are here. The cop grabbing your phone at that time can take a look at your call record and use that as part of the case. Now, Colorado is the only state I know of that that allows that. But again, it's contemporaneous. Why? because of the fast moving nature of new right. technology. But the Supreme Court goes, wait, wait, wait. If it's on there and you need it for the case, best route is always what? The search oh, warrant. Yeah, warrant. You yeah, see? And, and so you and I both agree on that. Yeah. You and I agree that when in doubt, whip it out. And you should always, even if you have plain view exception and you're in the house, you know, they, 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 I, I chase the guy down, I tackle him in his living room, I look around and I see all this evidence of other crimes. Perfect. And you don't have it. Yeah, to get the search warrant. But what do we both do? We both start drafting the affidavit and lock down the house because you can keep that item for as long as you want. Like for that cell phone, you don't have to return the cell phone when the guy's lawyer shows up to bond him out. You go, no, it's part of the case. 
and I'm going to unlock it over time. So in this case, the specific thing was that the iCloud was accessed for the information. And then what happened, Brian? What did Apple do? Well, yeah, th this is this is kind of gets into it, and, and yeah. it, what they've done before. Uh, well, this one they get just he had access to everything, right? Yep. In in this case, um, and sometimes these com the the companies like that, especially Apple, uh, just because iPhone use is so prevalent, it's really yep. why they're involved in a lot of these. Um, you know, they've done it before. Where they said, well, we're not going to give you access to certain areas, or we're only going to give you this much, or yep. we're not going to do that, um, and. It, because they think it's a violation of your privacy. Um, yep. They think it's, you know, hey, that's our customers private, which, which, you know, that that is not superseded or the, the law supersedes that. I mean, if you have a warrant right. for that. Yeah, yeah. this uh, is not for, uh, First Amendment. No, this is Fourth Amendment. Fourth Amendment. And that's, right. and, and that's a and great that's distinction. A, that's a key mistake there, Brian. So so the people working at Apple rightly think I don't want to release it. So that's why the writ of mandamus comes down from the judge going stay in your lane. This is law. Release it. And then Apple turns around on this specific, the, 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 the McCall caper, and releases everything, everything. in McCall's iCloud uh, yeah. account. Which, how does that complicate the case <laughs> yeah. now, right? Because Apple has no idea what might be or what might not be yeah. relevant. So they try to do the best for the law and they release everything. Well, that's not in McCall's best interest. So here's a great argument for the defense attorney saying, look, this is speculative. And you have an unlimited breadth of search. That's not at all what the Fourth Amendment says. Right. Fourth Amendment says that you have to be detailed in those items and where you're likely to find those items. And and there's so many case laws about it, like uh, uh, the the elephant in the matchbox. You know what I'm saying? You're yeah. unlikely to you're, find yeah. an elephant in a matchbox. So you can't tell me that's where you're looking for it. That's uh, too broad, Brian. And, and and so you laugh at those, but that's how justices try. Remember, you're. Average cop now has more training and experience than a cop ever has had. Yeah. And we know, both of us uh, are friends with, coppers that are PhDs and chiefs yeah, of police absolutely. that have multiple degrees yeah. and a PhD, right? Yeah. That wasn't always the case. So you had to go to a judge. And remember, sometimes the judge was voted in or appointed and didn't have that experience. But most judges have a wealth of knowledge on the law. So, so here you've got defense attorneys and SCOTUS, like SCOTUS says, uh, fruit of the poisonous tree. If, if your yeah. intent was nefarious, we're going to exclude all that evidence. Everything you what, found from that. Everything. And and so anything that touched it, uh, I don't know if you know uh, much about arson investigation, but like when they're rebuilding a part of a house from an arson or from a, a natural fire, anything that the, the fire touched has to be replaced. So even if it's a two by four that was, yeah, you know, yeah, a yeah. door jam in another room and it was just smoke damage. Hey, that's fire. It's got to be replaced. You know, it's just weird laws like that. Well, SCOTUS wants to make sure that they don't leave any stone unturned. So if you got these things from an illegal search, whether your intent was to do it illegally or not, unless your intent was completely well, so, accidental, it's going to be excluded. So the, and the, this is the big point of, of this case of what, you know, I think so. So so they brought this up. His His attorney said, well, wait a minute. This yep. search into his phone is way too broad. You can't get, you can't look at all this stuff. This doesn't have, you don't know. You're just, you're on a fishing expedition, right? This is junk. Exactly. And right. the way it went, you know, and, and this is, this is why this one's so interesting because that they had been ended up the, the appellate court saying, well, well hang on here. Um, it, that maybe it was too broad. Maybe the warrant should have been written differently or excluded certain things. But the intent of the officer was to locate these things and do X, Y, and Z, right? I mean, he had right. a clear intent. Uh, his, yep. He was not trying to find – I'm, I'm sure – they, you don't want everything on someone's phone anyway. It's too much for your investigation. Exactly. You don't have to go through it, right? Exactly. Uh, but but the idea was he, his intent was was clear and it was not nefarious. It was for very specific. So therefore, the court said, well, hang on. Although this may be too broad in general, although yep. this could have been written differently, um, it's clear. And, and that's important to understand too because um, case law can get pretty difficult. And then applying case law in the moment can be very yep. difficult, especially a lot of the, the police officers that listen to this podcast too so you know they're, they're like I, I see some there's some good stuff out there right now on social media where they're trying to explain certain case laws for you to use yeah. in the moment and that's tough but but it falls down to as long as you're acting within the uh 
the intent of the law. You don't have to know and name and recall and recite and, every single case. You exactly. get what I'm saying? Meaning, no, I don't you're have to right. Be able to say, well, that it, was Jackson versus this in 1978. It's like, no, as long as you, you what you're doing it. falls in with yep. with the intent. The the uh, and, and even uh, if you had the case name wrong and you had the spelling wrong, doesn't so matter. Brian, the, yeah. the U.S. Constitution. There is no place in the Constitution that says what to do if a search warrant uh, uh, is unreasonable. OK, or right. the search itself is unreasonable and overturns. OK, uh, well, real quick, uncovers real, stuff. real yeah, quick. Too, what, do you, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Like, like, so like, the, like just the U.S. Constitution. That a yeah. Uh, 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 the Supreme Court of the United States had to come in and create what's called the exclusionary rule to throw out evidence that was seized during unreasonable searches, because the law in the Fourth Amendment says no search. OK, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 the idea is that except when and it shows all the, the instances that you can do a legal search. But what it doesn't say now, if the search is illegal, folks, throw out the evidence. It doesn't say that now it's implied and assumed. But, Brian, it's not the letter of the law. So yeah. The Supreme Court of the United States said, OK, well, let's make this a letter of the law. This is excluded. So it's been called the exclusionary, exclusionary rule, and it specifically discourages police from acting poorly, writing bullshit warrants, you know, map versus Ohio. We could yep. go through yeah, all the yeah, case yeah, law, yeah. right? Ton, tons okay. of them. Yeah. But what they also said, there's a good faith exception yes. to the exclusionary rule. Now, it wasn't the same day. Okay, these things happen <laughs> yeah. all the time. The law moves like a glacier, this Brian. Is, that's important to understand. That's actually right? a really good point yeah, to, to okay. include it there. So whenever police act in good faith and they believe that the warrant is valid, okay, then the warrant is flawed, but it's not going to stop that evidence from being included. So the good faith exception is how you save that evidence. Yeah. But you okay. can't intentionally try to force the hand of the court. The idea is in this case – uh, uh, the court, the appeals court, and another appellate court higher up, the 11th Circuit, looked at the evidence, and they all said that the detectives' efforts were objectively reasonable, and objectively reasonable means that they were guided by good faith at that time in that place. He didn't sit down and conspire and go, fuck, let's go for the cloud. What he did is he said, I think these codes for the phone are in the cloud. And so he wrote the warrant based on that information, and didn't understand that that was sufficiently broad and certainly was never likely to expect that Apple was going to come back and release all of that information, some of which could have been deemed prejudicial. So whenever the court sees something that might be prejudicial, the court steps in and says, oh, whoa, whoa. And, and the judge should, too. The, the good rules of evidentiary procedure is if something uh, uh, comes out at the trial and it's overly prejudicial, the judge should stop it, right? Yes. And, and not let the jury see it or at the bench trial, the judge shouldn't include it. And what do we mean by that? We mean stuff like a photograph that is overly graphic. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. A, a video or audio tape that when taken out of context is a lot of screaming and yelling and gunfire. And now all of a sudden you're tainted, Brian, because you're going, well, holy shit. You know, that that must have been this type of situation. You got a rule on the evidence. Mm -hmm. And here it was likely that the cop was guided uh, by genuine good faith. I mean, when you read the caper, and the caper is going to be in the episode details yeah. for all of the, the oh, yeah. folks that it's... like to listen to us and look at stuff that we think is interesting. When you read this caper, it's great. You you can actually see how, how, how McCall, as this is going on, is going through his mind and going, I swear to God, if I lose any more money, right? And, and I would love to read about the co-conspirators at some point in the future about what made them shoot these guys. Did the guys get aggressive? Hey, you're not getting out of here with that. I don't think the gun is loaded. Uh, there's a, yeah. a, a, a caper right now I, out of, uh, out of uh, gosh darn, Panama or the Philippines, I don't know which, where an American-born uh, lawyer uh, it, st it was stopped at a blockade. You know how the people are stopping the roadways now. And he pulls out a gun and goes, ah, this is the day that I make the, the decision in the caper. And somebody goes, hey, what are you going to do? Shoot us, old man? And he does. He shoots two of them dead, right? You got to be careful when you're making those kind of statements. And in this high tense situation of this card game, and all of a sudden these two guys burst in with an armed robbery, Brian, can you imagine being in that room? I mean, no, and, all of and, us have been in the shit. Well, but I mean, yeah, you, you you never know how those things are going. There was actually just nope. one that came out on, on social media. I think it was out in California. I can't remember where it was at, but it's like literally these three guys are just sitting in their garage, drinking beer, sitting down at a little table, like just bullshitting, having a beer. Right. And these two guys I, I, walk in. One's, one's got like, you know, the, uh, a rifle. One's got, I, I think, a pistol. I don't remember, but... And then they walk right in and it's like, hey, they want to take all their stuff. And these guys are sitting there. You could tell, like, they were like, 
what I, you couldn't hear everything that was said. Yeah, I don't know what yeah. it was. I don't know what the relationship was, but you tell the way these three were sitting there were like, they didn't feel overly threatened by the situation. And right. they were like, what's going on here? And the guys had to like, even like push the one guy with the barrel of the, the, the weapon. And then eventually these three guys kind of looked at each other and they jumped these dudes and they took the guns and the guys had to run off. But it was like, you're, you're always rolling the dice at that point. You don't know, you, but you but, really are. But even but with the, high high levels of training, yeah, and, and the more folks in that smaller area start to complicate things. Look, there was a guy that wrote an article on uh, this is being recorded on Thursday, so it would have been Monday. And Brian, he was uh, he had to get a replacement phone, and was in a phone store. And uh, minutes into being at the counter at the phone store, the place gets robbed by two guys that are holding uh, uh, their hands in their pockets as if they have weapons. And the guy says, "I I wasn't sure they had weapons." Because they were certainly using both hands to grab all the free shit they were stealing, right? Yeah. But at the beginning, when they announced it, he said the most amazing thing was that he was the only person that was looking for something to club him with because he was afraid that he was going to die. He said half of the people in the store kept shopping, and the other half in, in the store pulled out their phones and started recording. And he said it, it just shocked him. Look, oh, yeah. we're in a time when you're really not sure. Look, uh, uh, you stop a shoplifter. And you're the one that gets fired. Yeah. Uh, uh, store policies are actually saying, do whatever you want to do inside the store. We don't want to create havoc or, you know, uh, the court systems, Brian, say we're going to charge for the lowest level misdemeanor possible and release you with a ticket for a future court appearance, not even book you or process you. These are unprecedented times for those type of capers. So here you've got a really good caper. The detectives did great work on this, Brian. Yeah. They determined, hey, listen, there were these calls. What could have transpired? Well, you can't make a search warrant on maybe, okay? The search warrant has to be drafted on, on reasonableness first and on artifacts and evidence that would tend to show the person reading that affidavit who's going to be a judge, Brian, a sworn right. uh, member of the court. And that sworn member of the court can't just look at what's on that paper. He has to determine, uh, uh, are the rules of evidence followed? Uh, does this forward justice? Will this help both the prosecution and the defense? These are tough things. And we don't think about that, do we? We, we think about it. It's, it's just a procedure. Yeah, check in the box. Go ahead. Swear to it. It's so much more. And, it, and that's why this case is so important for the digital forensics. Well, that's and that, for the future technology. No, right? no and, that, and that's why I was partly why I was so interested, in too, when you when you sent yeah. me this one, because, um, you know, obviously now you have you have uh, precedent here right every yep. past case is 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 precedent that you base future cases on and exactly. you know the the this um because there's been problems well problems before in the past where let's say law enforcement was trying to get something from um let's say apple because they're they're you know again because iphone's yep. so prevalent it's usually them um yep. they, and they remember with the uh the shooting out in san bernardino years ago i think there was the, during that investigation trying they didn't want to wanna, they didn't want to turn over and they didn't want to give it to them because they their I think their argument was something like, well, if we show them or give it to them now, they're going to know how to do it. And then right. once they know how to do it, the, that, you know, the we don't want the FBI to be and able to And they called that unlock. the Pandora coming out of the box. And yeah, exactly. Said, we can't put it back in, Brian. You're exactly right on that and, caper. And that started a, a, a legal challenge that went on for years. Yeah. And, and the, those things don't they you know they don't get addressed until something happens right. right that's that's the whole thing it's like oh shit well how where does this fall under you know what i mean and it obviously like you you brought up a great point earlier when it was like this isn't a first amendment right this isn't yes. about you saying something this is about you this is a fourth amendment to tied yes. to a criminal case so, uh, so uh, let's, a felony on let's, robbery you know what i mean this was, it, it was and where people were shot and yeah. the detectives at that time had no idea whether those people were going to live or die brian and and so that's the same thing that happened with the shooting the husband and wife team going to the Christmas yep. party. They didn't know if those people were uh, had planted bombs. If that was part they, of a larger right. they, uh, so, scale so attack, they, right? That, that that one they were trying to say there was some exigency, right? There was some emergent thing that was still ongoing. Right. There's still a potential threat to the public right now. So we need to do which this. is a recognized exception to the search warrant rule, it, and that's important. It it is, but I think at at that you know and and and. I think that puts that company Apple because you know these these are one you got to remember they're private companies or it's a public traded company but it's a private whatever it doesn't matter it's a, it's a company they so they have certain rights and but that 
because they're a telecom company, man, <laughs> or a phone, like you're thrown into all kinds of a different yep. legal uh, uh, issues because you're part of society. You're part of all these things yep. that are going to happen. You don't just have some product, you know what I'm saying? That, that people, you know, a, a toy you sell and they play your house and you're never going to come involved. Yep. This is, this is, this is tough for them to navigate because privacy is extremely important to everyone, especially in the United States. Um, and what, you know, we can control and, and can't control. And, and Apple's really good at, at a lot of privacy stuff because yeah. um, mostly because they want to own your data and not give it to anyone else. Like you, you on your iPhone, it has all this, Hey, you can, the, hey, this this app wants to track you across other apps, and you can say no, I don't want it to do that. No, I don't want it to track you. Right. So a Apple loves that because you're as a as a consumer, you're like, oh wow, they really care about my privacy, and they're just like, no, we want to be the ones to own all of your data. Right? Exactly, <laughs> and, so, and, and we'll sell it we'll for the sell right the price, but we're not going to give it to you for a search warrant. So let's talk <laughs> about that for just a minute. Let's let's do a it, sidebar. It, 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 yeah, but the strategic operational yeah. and. Tactical, the strategic, oh, right. <laughs> strategic, it's early, man. It strategic is. operational and tactical view. We talk about that often in class because we try to tell you to adjust your lens for the right argument, right? So when we yeah. talk about the first and the fourth, let's talk about the first in context for a minute. So you're on a plane, you've had a couple of extra drinks, you're at 35,000 feet, you stand up, you this shit is, your pants, this is you start fighting personal. and yelling. This is getting very I know, personal Brian, to I me. Paused, <laughs> but I'm not going to attribute it, so I'm not going to tell you it was you. Uh, but, you, you know, you start yelling at people and everything, and now it's making other people uncomfortable, and they're afraid, and the plane has to land, and then your pilots are arguing whether they should shoot each other. Yeah. Uh, another <laughs> argument there, right? Several but, cases put together, uh, but I like it, yeah. Yeah, but, but let's string this together, too, okay? When you take a look at that, there's so much that's in play. For example, I've got my First Amendment rights. I can say fire in a fucking theater or I can say bomb on a plane. Well, no, you can't. And that's, again, people not fully understanding it. But let's look at the obverse, the other side of that, pardon my language. And let's look at the strategic concerns of the company are to get that plane to a location on time mm -hmm. and safely and to make as much money possible as doing it, right? Now, that opens them up because part of that is the allegation of over-service, which at the operational level would be the airport, the bar on the ground, those yep. other people. And now the tactical level, Brian, is your steward or stewardess, they don't call them that flight attendant now, uh, a flight attendant who makes the decision that I'm just going to move that person's seat where they don't anticipate that it's going to be a larger issue. Now the plane has to be diverted and that's a million dollars and all the people have all these other problems. So wherever you are in the stack, and now let's look at the copper that was on this cape. The copper gets the call. There's been a shooting. Now he figures out there's two people that are down. The shooters are still out. So there's a whole part of that tactical level that's going after those shooters. Now you've got your operational level. It's saying, let's safeguard the evidence. Let's take a look. And then your strategic level here is the infighting between the defense attorney and the and the prosecuting attorney and the law. And, and what elements are we actually yeah. looking for? And who's the suspect? So, so we the reason we get uh, so excited, and I don't want to take words out of your mouth, uh, the reason we get so excited about these type of capers are they're so rich. They're fidelity rich capers that have so much to do. Now, it has to do with technology, but it has to do with the first and the fourth. And it has to do oh, with, with yeah. uh, uh, digital forensics, and it has to do with legal rights. So, so that person at Apple and says, I'm not going to do your 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 uh, yeah, you bidding you because I'm, the... I work for Apple. I don't work for you. Yeah, but you're working in the United States, and so you're subject yeah, to the laws of the United the States. Liar. You get what I'm saying? So, man, that's tough, right? And and uh, I'll give you another one. Here, Here's a hot-button topic. Might as well throw some uh, 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 fat and lard on the fire to see <laughs> it sparkle this morning. Uh, when we start seeing the responses, and everybody's seen the responses, uh, uh, Hamas, down, boo, hate, uh, death, fear, uh, Israel, yay, we support, right? But when you see the marginal data that comes out and somebody says, yeah, hunt them down and hang them and kill them and do that, yeah. hold on a minute. Yeah. What, what, what you're doing is what you're doing is you're diving right into that cesspool and trying to swim around there. Look, we have an incredible country because when when you look at how the legal process goes, the only people that hate the legal process is where it doesn't go your way. Well, okay. of course, but that, here well, that, you that's... can't be corralled up and killed and lined up against that's... the wall. So I love that. that I, I, I love that, that part. That's that's always the First Amendment rights. Well, we have free speech. Well, unless it's something you don't like, and then suddenly everyone wants it, it, to 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 exactly take shut your... to, to shut here them down. Go. 
quiet them. You can't say that. I thought you were going to use Chud, which is great because Trot was on uh, uh, on, uh, Turner Classic last night, by the way. And, and, you know, you – this 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 is the the issue um with anything anything digital is the next we, we the, the law is still being written on it right and and yes. but there's but there's precedent for all of this stuff and it, which is why i love talking about this because everyone's like well this is a new thing it's like well no it's 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 really not and and you know to to back to your point too when someone's like oh let's hunt them down like dogs let's do this they get a well, it was the same thing after 9-11. It was like, well, the gloves are coming off now. It's like, what do you mean? Like, what, what right. if, if this was, if this felt within the, our, what we can do legally in the laws of armed conflict and this met the criteria, why didn't you do it before? Yep. It's like, well, yep. why does it change? No, it doesn't change. The, the law is the law. Our intent is the intent. And it our policies and procedures are, are this. So, so Because what if do you it's mean? pendulous, like, Brian, what rights do we really uh, retain? Do you see what I'm trying to say? What What's the goal of having a constitution? What's the goal of having a bill of rights? Now, what those people did was patently wrong, and it's barbaric, and it's yeah. horrible, oh, and they'll God, yeah. pay. Okay, but but you know, and this is a war, so there's different rules. There's the uh, you know uh, 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 absolute rules of engagement and and laws of armed combat. And, and the idea is that countries agree to that. Why? Exactly for this. Yes. Exactly for this situation to happen. So, so McCall had absolutely every right to say that the search was too broad. But the courts reined him in by going, wait a minute. This is a new thing. And it's in flux. And in the best interest of the gosh damn Constitution of the United States, we created the good faith exception. And you know what? It's right more than it's wrong. And that's what saves us. As a well, nation, that's what saves us. Bro. That's that's a um that's a standard that I think a lot of people don't truly understand, right? It, sure. it, we we want it to be yes or no. We want it to be A or B. We want it to be this. Cut and, and dry, black and absolutely white. Absolutely not. The and the law right. can, the law can't be that way. It cannot right. be that way. It's always about how well, certainly you, not if you're the one being arrested. You know well, that, that's it. That's that's what right? I mean. It's 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 um the the pr- the problem is when we get into these cases is you have to take them all at an individual level and not go well. This is again another broad overreach of this. It's like well, no, it's not. Like here's what exactly. actually happened, and so so that's that's the issue with some of these because you know everyone's for it when it's helping them out, and then when it's against them, exactly. it's like wait a minute, I don't yep. like this. It's like well. Yep. This is this is the system, and and it's to your point of it's right more than it's wrong. Um, that's about as good as it gets. <laughs> I mean, you're but, always but trying listen, to get it to be more right than wrong. Exactly. But, meaning, meaning but, you're always trying to increase whatever that 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 confidence. Medicine, is, you know, same but, way. But exactly, Law, same way, right? And and as long as we're on, and this is where good faith comes in, as we're as long as we're on the side of right, but you don't get to decide right and wrong by might by sheer volume of force, by your gun. Because then if we did, we could say, well, you know, I have more guns than you, so this is the new law. Uh, America's never been that way. No. Well, we kind of we <laughs> were during the Revolutionary War. But, yeah. the, but the whole idea was that what did we have to do with our prior presidents? A lot of people don't know this. First through third real important presidencies that were going on there, and especially their vice presidents and when they yeah. left office. You know what a lot of time was spent? is going across to Europe and going, we're a legitimate country now. Yes. We, we have an army and a navy, and and we have a constitution and, and a bill of rights, and we're a country. So let's get back to trading, and you deal with us yeah. like you would deal with France or Spain. Brian, do you know how big that is? This case is that it's, big. It's, a, 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 you get what I'm saying? It's legitimacy. Because, you're, you're it, you have exactly. to establish we're, we're, this is a legitimate thing. Not we're, we're just forcing for, you. Yeah, if McCall for for every similar case that's coming and those cases, Brian, that are right around the corner that we don't see because it beholds down and up. It beholds back to the original thing that, listen, uh, uh, if a flawed warrant comes out, then we have to deter that information. That evidence cannot go forward. But in this case, Ty goes to the runner because the guy didn't do it uh, uh, illegally and he didn't do it intentionally. It was an unintentional mistake that he made. So his actions and efforts were objectively reasonable, reasonable and standard. What do, what do we find in human behavior pattern recognition analysis? People come up to us all the time and they go, well, if you take a look at these different formulas, yeah. like even Bayes, because, you know, I'm a big Bayes fan. But the idea is those formulas are flawed. Why? Because those formulas happen in a vacuum and life doesn't happen in a vacuum and laws aren't broken in a vacuum. Well, and that detective wasn't working in a vacuum, you know? 
yeah, you you just opened up a really big door. Another big that one. one. I apologize, but, uh, but no. And and we'll you know what you what you're talking about is probability and likelihood of these events, yes. and then how people go. Well, then this could happen. Then that could happen. It's like well, n- no, not necessarily. That's um, not how well, medicine. Or law what's, or what's math the, work. That's, that's an unlikely scenario yep. in this sense. And then you're it's talking not how about how gravity works. You're talking about Bayes' theorem and 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 you know inferring information with some sort of statistical probability, which you can do. But like you said, that's sort but of what did Bayes say at White Belt? Bayes said at White Belt before he started putting pen to paper, and and I I believe it. Bayes was like, look. The best indicator of future behavior is past behavior. And that idea, Brian, has been around for a good long time, right? So those are the types of things that I like to hang my hat on because even now it's hard to argue the logic there. And well, in this case, the defense attorney had a lot to hang his hat on, and there was a lot of, of meat on this bone. One, uh, Apple released way too much information. Two, the cloud had nothing to do with it because the information was dumped 12 hours before the yeah. crime was committed. So if he didn't like you, you can't say, I bet that McCall was thinking about this in the days coming up to it. Yeah, so I want to go back and I want to search right. every you can't. You, you see, and that's that's there's no evidence to support so that important. claim. Right. But there's evidence to support physics. There's, there's evidence to support centripetal force. So that's what I'm trying to say is when we take a look at these, if we side with the hard sciences and a couple of the soft sciences, the answer tends to to rise to the top. You know, the, the rising tide raises all boats and we're a better nation because of it. This is the perfect case where somebody would go, hey, man, they overreached. They went into his cloud and look. Brian, I got stuff. Uh, if I die, uh, uh, clear my browser history. You know what I'm to say? <laughs> that should be your first act. Do me a favor. Uh, uh, so none final, of us want that. What, black were, guy, what right? were his final words? Please delete exactly. my browser history. Exactly. But think about that for a minute, right? But well, what didn't we do? We you, didn't create an armed robbery and an attempted murder, right? Yeah. Big, yeah. big difference in the You're, standard there. Okay. And. The way I look at it, because you're bringing in, well, you brought up Bayes and you're brought, bringing up physics is, and, and you, you kind of said it w- without, you kind of, well, you sort of brushed past it, but you sort of said that that happens in a vacuum. And the, the sort of the analogy I would use when you, when you talk about the stuff, it's like, you know, what the, the equation for, for, you know, gravity, you know, the objects yes. fall at 9.8 meters per second squared until it reaches terminal velocity. Exactly, but it doesn't in real life. Meaning that does in a vacuum, everything will fall at the same rate. But if I have a parachute on, or I have wind resistance, or there's drag, there's all of these other factors that come into play. But the baseline yep. for it is this equation, and that works, and that's what we compare it off of. But but it's just like this. It's like hey, this is precisely the rule. baseline but, plus anomaly equals but, decision. But, right. But well, I'm getting into it, meaning that this is I the get it. I this get is it. The, this is the rule. But then. There are that that's not how it plays out in real life, but it is because how it plays out very, in real life. It is, you, you, it, it is it, that rule never changes. It but follows your the, situations and yes. elements of the, the event change. So, so look, uh, uh, I remember an old argument. I remember uh, a couple of ridiculous arguments in law school. Uh, one of them is the welcome mat. You remember me telling you about that? Well, I didn't break into the guy's house because he had a welcome mat. <laughs> you know what? I, I took him for face value. Okay, shut up, first of all. Just shut up. That's my legal defense on that one. Uh, It says come on uh, in. Right, and then uh, the argument that uh, I heard in the 37th District Court where a person said, yeah, well, the cop was speeding too. And and the (laughs) driver trying to beat a ticket said, look, I I know I was going 65 and a 35, but the cop had to be doing that much to catch me. And the judge, Judge Kennedy at the time, God rest his soul, uh, did everything but slap the guy. You get what I'm trying to say? Now, look. That quantum leap of logic can only occur in that experiment, in that test case, in that lab. Because when you take it out to the clear light of day and you play it with real humans, Brian, it doesn't work. What was our biggest argument all the time when we were managing 40 or 50 role players a mile away from, you know, tier one operators that were looking at binos and we had a very clear script. What what did we always tell the role players? What what don't don't you do? Don't grow a brain. Don't Don't grow a brain because you think – that when you step around, man, it would be better if you jog around that corner. And you think that it would be better it, when you light that cigarette that it, that you look left and right it before you light it. the whole dynamic of the... Of and the... so everything spiraled into yeah. the sun, Brian, and we were all worse for wear. And that's what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is this happened. 
Now, there was things that happened a few seconds before it and a few seconds after it, but this happened. So at that time and at that place, did the detective make the right call? Not a minute later or an hour later or a week later with all this new information coming in, but at that time and at that place. I think and, that's an important thing. And it's, it's like you're, you're hitting the pause button and saying, here, stop. Yep. And, and explain it. And and this is important because this gets into sometimes when, when people get stuff wrong and it's uh, on our like social media stuff when I'll put stuff on Instagram or yes. something and like it kind of spirals out or people don't really get, it's hilarious when that yeah. happens because you have people that are like spot on like, oh my God, yes, yes. this is amazing. And then you have the people, well, the what epiphany. about this? And they go all over and it's like, look, you're making this determination, this observation, this explanation at a time and place at this second, the entire situation, you know, fit, fit, physics keeps going, right? But but we're pausing it right here and say, based on what we know right now, here's what yep. can happen. Now, the situation's going to continue after that, and exactly. other things may happen, but you have but to But that can't that influence what happened at well, that that's, point, Brian. That's You're the, exactly the one, spot the on. one, you, you know, when you were in the uh, air, airport in, yep. in Newark, and the alarms start going off, yep. and it's telling people to exit, and no one's looking around, and no one's doing anything. And, yep. you know, and we had, I, you know, I posted sort of that clip. As it just shows, and part of it is there's different terms for it, but it's really just, you know, sensory ad adaptation. The more times I exactly. hear an alarm, the less likely I am to notice it. I don't pay attention exactly. anymore. And how many times that happened? It's the, oh, I thought it was balloons popping and it was gunfire, you know. Right. And and so you don't have to overreact, but you have to stop and take a second and go, what is going on here? Is this a, the real thing? And most people. And don't it's even... not my choice at that point, because well, it's the choice for the better good, just like the law to and, get the hell out of there. And but to bring it in. You know, then someone's like, well, yeah, but they could have just been using that to channelize people down this area. And that's where oh they're, it's God. like, okay, here we go. Like, so, no, so you let's don't know any of that. You don't know no. any of and that. You but you can't here's, speculate. Here's what you, you know cannot. right now. Right. And, and that's because if hard you're for... speculating, you're right back to what you said at minute one about a fishing trip. And you can't do that. Yeah. So so let's blow some minds. So car's going down the road at 65 miles an hour. The speed limit is 65. Everything is right. If you press pause and you freeze it, we got a tack freeze that's going, and you draw a line that's uh, uh, what would up and down be perpendicular to the ground. Vertical. Okay. Yeah, 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 a vertical line, but I want it perpendicular to the ground. So it's a, exactly at a 90 this way. Yeah. Whatever that would be, right? Yeah, I don't. Okay. <laughs> I and so you. stop. Just just go with just, me on this, okay? Yeah. It's an up and down line that goes to the ground, which is left and right. So you're making like a cross, but it's okay. a T, an upside down T. At that exact point where that radial is spinning and it's touching the ground, it's going zero miles an hour. But the car's still going 65 miles an hour. So each millisecond, nanosecond yeah. that goes by where the tire is in contact with the ground, it's not moving. So that's the problem is that the big picture is still in motion constantly, okay? And there is no pause button on life, but this allows us to go back and specify what likely was occurring at that point and how it influenced all future events. If we can't do that, then predictive analysis would be so flawed that it would be a parlor trick. And it's not. And predicting the weather and predicting the stock market, even though you've got the predicting the stock market being kind of like a parlor trick. When we take a look it's, at the people that are really good at it, well, there's some science and math and statistics at it. But what do we learn? And some insight that you have exactly. to have because the, the that when you get out to like the macro level like that, it there's so much, it's there's different. so many factors and there's so much complexity. So you have What's to the law? sort of- well, yeah. So this right? is why you have to define it within exactly. a specific context. Like that's what people are like, well, you can't. Predict. That's what I'm trying to get to. I'm well, trying to get that Mobius loop of logic to come back and say, so this is so much more complex than the average person considers. So you can't just make a knee jerk reaction and go, well, that's bullshit. And that's what America does. Right. That's what 97% yeah. of Americans do. They look at this and go, well, I don't want my phone records looked at. Well, this is not about you. Well, yeah, but it's <laughs> yeah. kind of about me. Do you, you see what I'm trying to say? This is very specific to McCall and his situation, well, the, although it's going to talk to all of us in the future. And, and, and the more cases, the more times this happens, actually, the more uh, – uh, the more specific it gets, right? The more and corners the get put on, on, on the document, right? Because now it's like the, the, the more limiting factors exactly. get put in when these cases come out. It's not that it opens it up. It's actually, no, no, no. Uh, it when makes these things it occur, so much more narrow. It makes it much more narrow. So so it's exactly. good that these things occur because then it gives a clear definition of what's Why do we always argue? Allowed. Why do we always argue for big data sets when it comes to human testing? 
because the more people that go through the situation, we're probably going to get the realistic answer rather than you said, yeah, we tested seven people yeah. over two and a half we, weeks. We did our, <laughs> we did our 12, we did our 12 person study. Am I lying? Okay. <laughs> but how many times do we see that? And we see a white paper that comes out and immediately it's picked up by the news media that yeah. says, Hey, this just in uh, caffeine and cigarettes are good for you. You know, nine eggs a day. Can't, can't beat that. Uh, uh, but, but that knee jerk reaction and, and the other thing, and going back to everybody that knows me knows what I mean about the stock market, Brian, over time, the law has proven that it was right. And yeah. there's somebody going to say, yeah, well, Jim Crow. Yeah. And guess what? They found it and they fixed, they fixed it. it. Okay. Yeah. And it was wrong. And, and guess what? All of these other things that were found like, like women, uh, uh you know, with their voting and all that other yeah. stuff, we are wrong. And it was fixed. And look, those aren't our personal opinions. Those were people's opinions at that time and at that place. And if you're going to use that argument, you have to put everything else in context. You got to go and wear period clothing. You've got to say, what does thee want? You've got yeah. to eat whale it blubber for three meals a day. I mean, Brian, if you want to use those archaic arguments, you have to go back there. The law is catching up. Technology evolves very quickly. The law evolves slowly. But it does. Well, that, catch wasn't up. that wasn't that the the you know I love it because you, you again you have to put it in the intent of what it was written for or what it was right. meant for and and at that time and place. That's what I love. I think yep. it was in the Simpsons one where they're all like, well, this couldn't be clearer. There's a Second Amendment one. Everyone has a right to bear arms, and they're wearing like exactly. bear arms on their on their exactly. hands. Like yes, bear but, arms. But know? look, that tongue in cheek <laughs> is hilarious. Hilarious humor goes and other people go see see what i mean so yeah, the second well, amendment right. is against gun rights like no, no. stop for a minute that's <laughs> not look we infer so much why because we're we egoists yeah. and we have to the world is our world okay and so absolutely everything in our environment belongs to me and it's how i get up this morning and what i have for breakfast and where i go and so when we look at it the law is a great equalizer and again the people that are telling you, no, it's not, are the people that feel as though they've been wronged by it. And if you have been wronged, you have the right to redress. You and do. what does redress mean? Redress means that you petition the court, but you don't do it with a Molotov cocktail. And, and yeah. that's that's to the argument uh, of, of the freedom fighter you know, uh, versus yeah. the terrorist. Yeah. Kiss my ass. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's context relevant. Yeah. Yeah. You can't make a definition. Right? <laughs> it just excludes everybody yeah. and says what you want today. That Oh my God, we're back to imposter syndrome. You can't just come up with shit <laughs> and make it a thing and start making money on it. Right. Come on. Stop. Yeah. That, that's like, that's how, that's, that's one of my favorite ones. Oh my God. This <laughs> my, every time I read that in the first couple of lines of a person and you see that they're a doctor and a PhD and they're a life coach and all this other stuff, it's like, like, well, then why did you go there? Why don't you come up with your own shit and tell us well, what you're about, you know? Yeah, it's it's uh, a lot of times it's just people wanting to talk about themselves. And yeah, of course it is. <laughs> but we also but... call those snipers because most of those, the social media allows you to put shots on target, even if you're not the designated rifleman. You get what I'm saying? And even if you have no idea what's talking about, I, I feel sometimes in my mind, and I'm not on social media, but I read the shit you send me, uh, where some people just want to be the the classic obstructionist. Yeah. And yeah. they want to say something just because they're in their basement and they want to be heard and has nothing to do with bettering society, you know? Right. And and a lot of that is that that sort of perception is is just really taken – I, I mean, you know, we we want to we want to make it about ourselves, right? And go. Well, of course, and, of and, course, and, it's identifying and, my point of view because you started this, and now well, I've got to infer. It's, 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 it's you know, even whatever. it's even back to the, those terms that people come up with. Sometimes yep. those or or different studies, and I know we did the episode on even personality tests. Some of those like start off really well or are or, or great in a lab or in well you know, intention for, for for insight. As would say. And yep. then so well, well, even the people that do it, they're like, hey, look, this is what I found. This is what it means. This is what I yep. think it is, and it's all really great. And then usually that part isn't usually the problem. It's when it then goes out in the mainstream people go oh yeah that's right i that's me that's i have that it's like wait what that's me like, <laughs> i do that all the time what, what do i always check when i have a headache oh my god it's, it's i check so... webmd and i've had parkinson's <laughs> you know I, I mean that's what it says i've got a brain injury and i have to go get treated I, and, and shelly's like when, no I, you're just fat and so. i know i know when you're not feeling well because you'll send that text like i think i have parkinson's <laughs> exactly <laughs> because that's when i've been on webmd all morning trying to look at my you know listen 
there was a time that I didn't look in the toilet after I went to the bathroom. Those times are long gone, Brian Aaron. <laughs> it's a new life for me. Your dad would understand. Ask your father. No, <laughs> no, no. But it, listen, uh, back to this argument. Somebody in the audience right now is going to go, why are we going to bat for this piece of shit? First of all, he's a human just like you. Yeah. And I would fight for him as hard as I would fight for you. And even though his intent was to right or wrong him losing money in an illegal gambling venue, okay, in his brain at that time in that place, he thought he was doing the right thing, okay? And guess what? He was a criminal. He was wrong. He needs to go to jail. But the legal representation he gets should be the best that he can afford and the best that we can afford to make sure that he's not wrongfully accused or convicted and that his rights weren't violated. And his iCloud have rights. So yes. yours. And you, you don't want people just poking around and looking in there because no, they're, it, again, I like to use the word fishing expedition. The worst cop cases you and I read, and we read a dozen a week, start with what? A fishing expedition. Hey, look at those two guys in that car. Let's go rouse them and see what's going on. And that spins out of control. And now we have an excessive uh, use of force and a death and a pursuit and all this other shit. I, I mean, come on. You know, that's what no, the and, and, bottom and line it, is this. It, this, well, case. this is. And, and people don't like it when, you know, people who did commit a crime and they yep. are guilty, they did do it, but then they get yep. off on some technicality. And it's that like, technicality no, like that's, is the most important it's thing. A, in it, your it, future. It's, it really, really is because I that agree. applies to all of us. It's like, be, and that's what everyone wants it in the situations they want until it happens to them, yep. until they're an innocent person. Right, getting uh, subjected to this thing because the law went too far or, or didn't go Absolutely. far enough, and and that that's the issue is that that's what these rights are for. And Every it, cop on the road in the inner city and many in other jurisdictions has one time or the other, Brian, heard from the person that they're stopping or contacting or whatever else. Why me? Why are you doing this? What does this have to do with me? Why? Because we make that personal, and in some do. instances, and very rarely, and very low number of percentages that contact is illegal and the court's there to fix that but yes. but the idea is that the most of the people just like these coppers were doing the right things you know what it's hard to say but those uh, guys in that illegal poker game that weren't in on on on, on the mccall caper the people that were just robbed okay they've got rights too and you're yeah. going well how do they got rights you know, they were in a CD hotel in the middle of town, whatever the case is. Yeah, some, we yeah. can't do that. We can't go backwards and gild the lily and add all this drama and do all those things. That's for Hollywood. And Hollywood blows. Bollywood. Uh, uh, but what we want to do in our own mind is we want to interpret the case in our viewpoint. And we got to stop doing that. What does tactical cunning say? Tactical cunning says I have to put myself in that person's shoes and see the world through their eyes and smell the coffee through their nose at that time in that place. And guess what? I'll make a better decision. That's why you got to read these cases and don't just read what the paper says on them. Brian, how hard is it to look up this case? Well, you, it's not one, well, but, but but that's, exactly. that's why, you know, you, 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 people reach out to us. Hey, what are your thoughts on this case? Or it's like, it just happened, dude. Like you have we need no time. idea what really yep. occurred until that inves yep. investigation comes out. And until, you know, it, it, that's when you have to look at everything because you don't know everything else is just, it's, it's speculation. It's pure. Yeah, but, speculation. Because here, what do we see here, Brian? We see now because of all the stuff that you'll have in the episode details, uh, uh, we see that it started as a speculative fishing trip. It's also, or a, uh, 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 you know, fishing uh, uh, analogy again, uh, but then it goes into the iCloud and it's technology versus digital forensic versus a guy at a poker game versus, and, and the complexity level branches and goes, but guess what else is in that case? All the, the files and all the motions and the judges' opinions and the different circuit court. Now that's when we can go back and take a look at it and give you, the, 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 the audience member, the best view on it. What happens well, is they hire CNN and all the other news stations, a pundit to go on right now and go, what's happening right now with this? And Brian, what do we find? Pedantic or wrong? Or even if they are well-intentioned, way too early to start knee-jerk reaction on, on the information. And we don't want to be that. We want to be somebody that gives you facets of the case to look at that'll make your life better or, or at least to help you understand better those things that are out of your span of control right because because one of the things is the constitution's about me and 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 so yeah. are the bill of rights 
but some of the aspects of it are out of my ken because I don't use them normally, and that is for the court of law. Uh, the whole reason it's called the court of law, you know, because that's where it's played before the bar, right? Uh, and, uh, and, and I don't think people look backwards sometimes for that historical perspective. And 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 this one actually um, will narrow future searches. That's and that's, that's the thing why we because, have to embrace it because they said, you know, well, well, wait a yep. minute. Yeah, I see why you did that. You 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 were sort of given more you did information. Here. Well, <laughs> yeah, it was okay. Your intent, exactly. because even it says, because I, 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 I was just trying to find it. Um, it, it it said in here the the detective who 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 was the uh, who wrote up the search warrant. Um, yep. he like before submitting it to the judge, he asked a supervisor and an assistant state attorney to review the document. He also consulted yep. two other detectives and a forensic supervisor. So yep. how many people is that that he went to even before? So he did what his What does that demonstrate? He, it's he, his intent. And, and he went, is this correct? Is this? And they exactly. went, okay, I think they were all in the same boat. Like, yeah, I think so. You know, well, yep. we, we haven't really seen it like this before. And then, you know, that's what they the appellate court came down and said. It's like, okay, you 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 wrote the warrant shouldn't have been this broad it shouldn't have included these things but but you didn't do that in the attempts of just randomly finding stuff you were actually took steps to ensure exactly. that his rights were protected and you only got information that was pertinent to the case however that's not how it turned out but that's not your fault uh you are then exactly. allowed to use that and and that's that's the beauty of this case and why i love exactly it so much right. when you sent it to me because it's it shows that it literally shows well a squared plus b squared equals c squared got it that's why you did this now going forward yes. this one will then be used to limit um warrant searches right i mean so, i mean it, it would be, the, be I, I think this one is actually. I think to you're say, exactly right. You can so only let's talk go about in certain areas, see how this case came about. Uh, this is what the court said. This is what the appellate court said. They said you you, you exactly. need to rewrite the warrant differently. And now, is that a new area? Well, yeah, of course it is because of the text and, it'll stuff and how it fix works. Future coppers, right? It'll show them how to get this and do this correctly. It'll help Apple. It'll help security. It'll help yes. the nation. But I, I want to go back for just a second to what you're talking about narrowing the scope. Look. B plus A equals D. I keep throwing that out there. Ba baseline plus anomaly equals decision. But the expert people that we try to train, we also tell them that not all evidence is weighted equally. Of course. Not all yeah. cues in your environment. And so we have to do this balancing act, and we can't put a round peg in a square hole. That's what I love about cases like these, okay? Because what they do is they point to those things that change the balance. The iCloud changed the balance of this argument. It wasn't just about the iPhone. And then when they went for just the code to get into the iPhone to get pictures of them, and guess what, Brian? There were pictures of them yeah. with a gun and all those other things, right? But you can't use ends justification and end the case there and go so there. So that's what we do. We don't just look at something and go, uh, it's a horse, down and back cow. It's a cow, yeah. right? We don't just sit there and do our knee jerk. What we do, and you use the term due diligence, we take a look at the artifacts and evidence that tend to support a reasonable conclusion. We create a few uh, explanatory storyline spirals and we measure what happens next. And what happens next indicates what the most likely and most dangerous courses of action are. And we're right well more than we're wrong. Yeah. What else can you ask for? Right. Well, that's that's uh, a lot of the issue. It goes back to kind of what I brought up earlier. That's a lot of the we 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 don't we, people don't like that. They don't they want the the well. What's the what, what's 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 left? What's right? What's good? What's evil? What's what's yep. wrong? You know, I mean, we want these very clear um, sort of boundaries, and and yep. it's just it just that's just not how it is. It's in flux, right? It's complex. Not how life it's, is it's, exactly. So you you can't do the. All right, you know, it's this team versus that team. That's too simple. I mean, it really is. Right. So, um, right. It, it, that 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 definitely brings into account of, uh, and th this too is why I love talking about these cases. And you know, a lot of people are like, well, why do you guys bring up the Supreme Court stuff a lot? Why do you talk about this case law? Like, I'm not a cop. I'm not this. It's like, no, Don't this need is to be one. Man. That, this, this is, is your you. rights. But it it it's a great um way to understand uh perception i mean it really is meaning really is. How, how you how you articulate what happened um and then what you can do with that information the the law is a good one example uh, healthcare is a good example exactly. you know it, there there's a bunch out there to how you I mean, that literally relate to situational awareness, right? This is what yes. this is. It's, 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 it's no different. It's artifacts and evidence. Right. You're just pointing the flashlight or the laser at a different part of the issue. 
and, right? and, and, and we're using question. different lenses, right? This is this exactly. is the legal ones in the Constitution versus behavior and this. So it it all it could because they're all intertwined, right? They're all right. built on one another. They're all built on on these basic underlying principles of how humans in a society interact with one another. And yep. you got to have laws. Once you get past a few hundred people, now you have to have. A, a police force you have to have laws you have to have codified rules because you can't just work as a team together at that point and yep. that number that you can do that because then the next answer small. tommy told me and it spins out of control yep. and then you know we have confrontations that are going to lead to death so what does brian mean about lenses well the lens on this could have changed if we didn't go for the law enforcement lens and we went for the uh, poker plane lens. Hey, folks, make sure you lock that door. And if anybody <laughs> leaves the party, right. they're not coming, they're not back. coming back. Then it, then it could also come for the, hey, uh, these vests are the poker player's friend because they'll delete, you know, 38, 45 and nine millimeter uh, weapons <laughs> if you get shot at a poker. What I'm talking about there is that when you take a look at life, life is like spinning that flashlight around in the room and having a bunch of post-it notes on the room on what's important. And as that light flashes by for that second in time, that thing's most important. Well, you can't do it that way. You have to slow time down Whoa. and stop well, you it could, at this incident. Yeah, and you could look at his comments and his behavior from the report of during the game to be like, when he's saying, oh, I'm going to fix this. Oh, I'm going to change this. Exactly. And then he gets up and leaves. I'd be like, hey, guys, uh, how about, about we, of, we, how about we jump out now? the effing window? Where's the fire escape? I don't think I we agree. should let him back in. <laughs> but but there, again, is you, you have uh, the training component. And some people... Uh, uh, that do training that that I don't absolutely agree with would say, okay, so from now on, no cell phones at the poker game. Uh, okay, I got it. But well, a predetermined time, yeah. you know, okay, no watches. You get what I'm trying to say? That's that, that uh, unreasonable leap of quantum logic that we're trying to avoid. We're saying that most things happen for a reason. Most of those things can be uh, 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 D- uh you know constructed and you can find the central points of it and that's the rule of law and the rule of law helps with this because there's laws of arithmetic and there's laws of physics and there's laws of entropy and we like those we like those because it's a digestible chunk and we can point it not flashlight but laser now laser focused and we get more out of it we get more meaning yeah well, that um, I think that's that's probably a good place to to end. What were we talking of, about today? I don't anyway. remember. Yeah, exactly. We I went down remember. some we went down some black holes, not rabbit holes, man. Yeah, we I know. There. That there, well, there's a there's a, there's a lot we got into there. A couple that of future we, episodes we, in there, I think. Yeah, that that you opened some doors that I tried closing, but <laughs> <laughs> Brian, if you don't start drinking now, you can't say you've been drinking all day. I'm just saying. The Marine Corps birthday is tomorrow from when we're and, recording this, and it's a and Friday. And while you're sobering up, it's Veterans Day on a Saturday. Holy well, crap, the, the, you talk about double-fisted. Yeah, so so it's it's a, it's a weekend filled with poor coping skills. Yep. <laughs> so, Brian, just so you know, to be ready for uh, the Marine Corps birthday, and thank you, Marines, for your service. Thank you, all veterans, first responders, everybody. You guys know who you are. Uh, Brian is going to break his own nose and give himself a black eye before he goes to the bar because he knows that's how he's coming back anyway. <laughs> and he thinks he'll get you know people, beat less because people leave it. me alone. Then they're like, well, exactly. that guy already that guy already got what was coming to him. Exactly. <laughs> well, I think we'll leave him alone. Except for the Marines that find him and go, oh, that's not good enough. That's that's got to break an arm here. That's, that's a so perfect funny. example of when I was uh, on I, I I one of the the deployments that it was based out of Okinawa and I had to go there. Me and a couple guys had to go prior to uh, the rest of the unit getting there. We had to go through a bunch of bunch of training over there, a bunch of courses that were fun. And then there's a there's an enlisted club on on <laughs> which you're already shaking your head, going, "Oh, God. I know what that means." So when everyone got in, we're like, "Oh, cool! When you guys get in, get settled, and then come meet us for a drink." And I'm standing there talking to my buddy, and we're having a beer, and then I'm just literally standing there talking. We're in the middle of a story, and I just get punched in the face, and I'm like, "There you what go!" The? And I literally start bleeding. I look over, and it's my buddy who just got there and i'm like well welcome, welcome to the party, to the party. <laughs> so. exactly right the only thing that could parallel a rival something like that is you know when you get that briefing for weekend libo and yeah. you look on there and the nco club is listed that's yeah. how you know that you're probably going to have a problem the worst, that the, weekend. Worst, the worst thing they do is say here's the places you're not going to and then everyone's writing it down uh-huh what they other place am i not allowed it. to go to uh-huh okay and then you immediately go to those places because like, those are obviously the fun ones honest but, to uh, god what a weekend right. so to add to that we're just a, a week and a smattering out 
uh, this is the month. Well, let's just call it that. Uh, my mom's uh, uh, death day is on the 11th. So that's somber town, right? Uh, which is also Veterans Day. But I don't, I'm not the one that goes backwards and all oh, horrible trauma and stuff. I think my brothers do, uh, uh, but I don't. But uh, what I do get somber town about is Shelly's birthday coming up, our CEO. Yeah. And God only knows what we're looking at there. Okay, that can go a whole bunch of different tangents. I'm happy. I'm sad. Shut up. Uh, so I don't know what to do, Brian. And I'm thinking of leaving for the for the couple of days before that birthday. I know I gotta right. that reminds me I gotta send her something. So let me don't, know. let me know. Don't Why? even bring it up. I think you avoid it like the plague. Oh, is I, that what I, we're I, doing this year? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know yet. I'm, well, maybe we should ask our viewers because I'm Tell a little what, frightened. I'll send it to you. <laughs> and, and we then, decide. And then you decide in the moment. If it's a good thing, like, oh, well, I've Brian her, sent this. Here's I've seen her Brian shoot and I've seen her fight, man. I don't oh, know. I know. That's <laughs> This is such a weird one. And and it's a significant big 6-0. You know what I'm saying? Oh. So that oh, just complicated. It's oh. like, I don't know, man. Um, I don't know. I'll be wearing a helmet. I'll tell you that. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have some protective clothing. What if we I, all I, just I pretend it's, it's only her 50th birthday? See now we're now we're cooking with you. Yes. Know what I'm this saying is the kind of idea that happy I need. fifty. Hey everyone, it's exactly. Shelly's fiftieth. You know, it's a big milestone. And then I'm going to so... get my ass kicked just for bringing this up. I'll just oh. let, let me warn everybody right now. We're not oh. talking domestic violence. We're talking about professional courtesy here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I'm afraid that's, everyone. That's that's uh that's got to go on your on her business card. We're not there talking domestic go. violence. It's called professional courtesy. I'm just if, saying. If you know Shelly, you'll laugh. God bless her. Exactly. You'll laugh. You'll cry a little. You'll cry. Yeah, you'll bite you'll, your lip a you'll do, It's nervous laughter. Uh, is that okay to laugh at, Shelly? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. We have to stop this. It's good. All right. Man. All right. Well, thanks, <laughs> thanks everyone, for tuning in. Check the episode details for the links to that case, and then check us out. we got more on, on Patreon and more coming up. Yeah. And we appreciate you all tuning in. Uh, please share this with your friends if you enjoyed it or if you didn't enjoy it too, because either way, the numbers go up and it's good for us. So, so thank you. <laughs> just, share, just share the episode. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, thanks everyone for listening. And don't forget that training changes behavior.